Hello everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Dr. Angel Storm and today we're diving into a topic that is crucial for healthy interactions and self-preservation, especially when you're with a narcissist. That's the topic of boundaries. So we're gonna uncover what real boundaries look like, why they're so essential, and how to discern them from the counterfeit ones, specifically when you're dealing with toxic individuals, those who are wounded and not yet healed, or narcissists. So let's jump right in. Let's start by talking about the real thing. Let's talk about real boundaries. I have an entire playlist of real boundaries, what they sound like, look like, feel like, how to set them on my YouTube channel. So you can go check that out after this video if you're still needing more information. Real boundaries are the limits that you set with other people that indicate what you find acceptable and unacceptable in their behavior towards you, but they are first for you. In other words, they are a reminder to you of what you will or will not tolerate. These are not to control somebody else's behavior. So these are the lines that protect you. They protect your self-esteem, they protect your identity, they maintain self-respect, and they ensure your emotional well-being as well as the fact that your goals are achieved. Real boundaries always come from a place of self-awareness and of self-love, true self-love. They mean that you have to know your values, you have to acknowledge your own feelings, and you have to be able to communicate clearly and effectively when something doesn't feel right for you. So for instance, telling a friend that you need time alone to recharge after work is setting a boundary when they ask you, you know, to go to dinner or to help them with a chore or something like that. So why are these so crucial? Without boundaries, we will allow other people to dictate our thoughts, feelings, and needs, and we will lose a piece of ourself in the process. Our identity will become enmeshed with somebody else's, where if we don't do something for that person, that person can make us feel as though we are less than. We don't matter because we didn't feel the vo fill the void that that person wanted us to fill in that moment. So boundaries are really necessary for us to lead a full, healthy uh, life that allow us, once again, to achieve our goals and to do our destinies. Boundaries also help us determine what's most important. They keep us from overextending ourselves to the point of burnout or emotional exhaustion. They help us maintain healthy relationships and ensure mutual respect and understanding while also protecting our own mental health. You only have so much energy to put into the things that are important in your life. And instead of having your energy being leaked all over the place by going into this person or this situation that you're not even personally involved in or invested in, uh, is one of the reasons why you need to have boundaries. So you might be still wondering, why do we need boundaries? Because imagine a world, if you would, without traffic lights, without road signs, and everybody just wants to drive wherever they want. That would be chaos, but that's precisely what happens when we do not have boundaries. Boundaries are actually protection for the things that matter to you, for the relationships that you want to have, because they provide them a safe place to flourish. Boundaries are the traffic lights. They're the road signs of our interactions. They help navigate the complex world of emotions, of expectations, of social norms, and again, our own goals. When we set and, and expect boundaries to be respected, then this creates a sense of stability and predictability, which is the essential foundation for any healthy relationship and also a healthy life. They empower us to stand up for ourselves, to, again, protect our values, to recognize our own self-worth, and to make clear decisions about who and what deserves our time and our energy. They are especially essential for those healing from past traumas or those who are in the process of rediscovering themselves because they're in a different uh, season of life. Um, and they are the tools that really safeguard our journey uh, through this process of, of healing from past traumas, of, of rediscovering ourselves, But there is a kind of mimicry that we need to be aware of, okay, which is counterfeit boundaries. Like all the other buzzwords out there, narcissism being one of them, I cannot stand it, by the way, when people just label anybody that they don't like as a narcissist, because true narcissists, that would be like calling anybody you don't like a serial killer, you would never do that. That would be absurd, in fact, on your behalf. You would be the one 
if you were the one labeling everybody like that, you would be the one who is told you're in the wrong, like you cannot do that. And yet we we as a society don't really have that perspective when it comes to labeling people as narcissists because it's such a buzzword. Boundaries are one of those buzzwords. These counterfeit boundaries are really manipulative controls disguised as boundaries. We're going to call it a boundary, right? And it's they're often used by toxic individuals, including narcissists, but they're not built on mutual respect. They're not built to protect the relationship. They're about power and control. So counterfeit boundaries will violate the principles of respect and equality. So when somebody imposes a boundary that you can't spend time with your friends or you can't spend time with your family, that's not a boundary. That's control. Real boundaries empower and protect both people in the relationship. They don't control and imprison. So how do you spot them? Counterfeit boundaries will intuitively feel wrong. I talk so much about on my channel the importance of learning to trust yourself, the importance of learning to to know that you are fully capable of handling your life now and in the future, that you are fully capable of making the decisions that you need to make in order to have a healthy and full life. So counterfeit boundaries will just initially feel wrong. They will feel innately, there's something wrong. You gotta check in your spirit, so to speak. And there, those feelings of discomfort, anxiety, or fear that come along with them should not be ignored. Okay, also counterfeit boundaries will often be inconsistent. They'll be conditional and they will come with threats or ultimatums. The boundary line will continuously be moved. There will be rules for thee, but not for me kind of things. So when you deal with toxic individuals or people who are simply wounded and just not not fully aware and not ready to own their journey and own their life, or when you're dealing with narcissists, these boundaries require you need to do another layer of due diligence when you're examining their their boundaries because individuals who already struggle with respecting other people and their boundaries will then try to tell you that they have the healthy one and i've talked about this so many times like why would you expect a narcissist to have healthy things when they're an unhealthy person it's like i don't expect an unhealthy tree to produce me healthy fruit the same thing is true here. So if the narcissist, somebody who you already know is an unhealthy person, is trying to then say, I have the real kind, I have the healthy boundary, you have the unhealthy boundary, you need to start questioning whether or not this is true. And also, when they're implementing boundaries, and if you try to question or um, get more information about the boundaries, which I'm gonna give you some examples of those in a second here, they're going to react with anger. They're going to try guilt tripping you. They're going to play the victim when you st try to enforce your limits or say, hey, I, I believe the same thing. But remember when you said X, Y, and Z to me when I tried to have boundaries? So here's how you handle these situations. You need to be firm. You need to be clear. And you need to be consistent. You do not negotiate your boundaries. These are not things that you negotiate over. You need to practice self-care and you need to seek support when it's necessary. And also remember that it's okay to limit or end your contact if your boundaries are continuously disrespected. Sometimes that is the best thing possible because, again, boundaries are only work when you have consequences. If you do not have consequences to your boundaries, you have suggestions. You don't; Those aren't actual boundaries. Boundaries are very clear. Hey, if you cross this line, then X is going to happen. If you do it again, then Y is going to happen. And if you do it again, then Z is going to happen. Getting around a community who understands healthy boundaries is one of the best ways for you to learn how to do this yourself. Because when you're around people who have lots of practice doing this, then it's easy to watch what they do and start implementing the way that they implement boundaries for themselves. And so if you are wanting that type of community, consider either joining my Narcissistic Detox Intensive, which is a year-long program where we completely overhaul your life. Everything from your finances to boundaries to breaking covenants and soul ties is covered in the intensive. Please join that if you are in court or plan to go to court with a narcissist. And if you are not quite ready 
to go that deep into the healing process and the reworking process, or if you are already free from a narcissist, then I want you to consider joining my You Are Not Crazy group. This is a monthly subscription. It's only $25 a month, but you get a deal if you pay for the whole year up front. And this comes with a private community as well, as long as short digestible podcasts and journaling prompts that you can use to start implementing your own boundaries or start discovering what the real premise of narcissism is. What does narcissistic abuse feel like, look like, sound like? So you guys can go check those out. They're in the description of this video to join either one of them. So remember, your emotional health is paramount and setting boundaries is a form of self-care. This is not selfish, it is necessary for your well-being and your growth. And again, get around people who understand this as the norm. They just live their life this way. Boundaries are your personal right. They are an expression of your self-respect. They are demonstrating to other people how you treat yourself and how you expect to be treated by them. Real boundaries will fortify your inner peace and your the counterfeit ones will just be another form of manipulation. So stay strong, stay aware, and don't be afraid to stand your ground. Now, you might be saying, how do I tell if this is a legitimate or a counterfeit boundary? So I'm gonna give you some questions that you can ask. Somebody who wants a relationship with you will be setting boundaries in order to protect the relationship once again. So somebody who wants a relationship is going to welcome you having buy-in, is going to welcome you fully understanding what they are saying to you when you when you set a boundary. Somebody who does not want that, somebody who just wants compliance, somebody who just wants you to go along with whatever they say will react with anger and and uh, retaliation when you ask about why they're setting a boundary or is the boundary healthy. So some things to ask yourself first of all, does this boundary that the other person is setting respect my personal space and autonomy? Because legitimate boundaries, again, are for you first. If I'm implementing a boundary, it's for me. If I expect you to, hey, don't call me after nine or you know, I, I can't hang out every single night after I'm done with work because I have to do X, Y, and Z. I'm going to expect me to abide by those things with you as well. If I tell you not to call me after nine, but I'm calling you after nine, that's not a boundary that protects somebody's personal autonomy. That's a rules for thee and not for me scenario, and that is a counterfeit boundary. So again, does it respect my personal space and autonomy, or is it one-sided? How do I feel about this boundary? Does this boundary make me feel empowered or controlled? Because authentic boundaries that are set by somebody else will actually make you see, oh, okay, these are these are the actual guidelines. You don't want me to call you after nine. You can't hang out Monday through Thursday after, um, after you're done with work, or we have to schedule a time in advance to hang out, and I respect that. I understand now the clear boundary that you would like me to follow in order to treat you with respect. But inconsistency shows that there are, you know, somebody is just trying to do whatever is going to fit the situation, and that's a form of control, okay? Subject change is like frequent changes um, and unpredictable conditions of a boundary. That's a counterfeit boundary. Another question, does setting or accepting this boundary align with my values and beliefs? So if you, if the boundary was you need to come with me every single week to you know, this type of religious meeting or you need to come with me t every single week to this type of thing and you personally don't agree with that, that does not align with your values or beliefs. That is not a boundary, that is a control manipulation tactic. Also, is there an element of manipulation, threat or coercion involved in setting the boundary? Because genuine boundaries are are without manipulation. They're just they're just facts, clean, clean and clear. Hey, this is where the boundary is. This is what's going to happen if you cross it. But coercion, threats, um, anger, that type of thing, those are all showing you that's a counterfeit boundary. That's not a real boundary. Authentic boundaries will contribute positively to your mental, emotional, and even physical well-being rather than stifling your growth or kind of questioning whether or not you have the real information or not. I tell my clients that there's only confusion in partial information. So if something d is confusing to you, you don't have the full story. You don't have the full picture. But once you get the full picture, it'll be very clear. See, that's why people who are in in a relationship of any kind with a narcissist are confused because they can't quite wrap their head around, why is this person doing that? I would never do that. 
or they're still struggling, is this person really a narcissist or is there something that I'm truly not doing? They're confused because they don't see the full picture quite yet. So if you feel confusion, you have partial information. That's a good indicator that you need to dive deeper into seeing the full picture truthfully for what it truly is. Is there open and respectful communication involved in setting this boundary? That's another one. So if the other person does not wanna discuss what the boundary is, hey, this is the boundary and that's it, that is a dictatorship. That is not a partnership. That is not somebody who wants a relationship. Just the fact that they're not willing to consider a dialogue to you should be a red flag that they are going to continue to make unilateral decisions for you and for your well-being this is not a boundary this is a coercive control mechanism and finally does this boundary seem to isolate me further from the supportive relationships in my life am i am am i st- am i able to spend more time with my friends with my family with my um with my church or my gym friends or whatever because People who see you as a, and respect you as a healthy, sovereign being will not seek to tear you away from healthy, supportive relationships in your life. So by asking some of these questions, you can really start to gather the nature of the boundary being set. And you can determine then whether this is a healthy boundary, a legitimate boundary, or if it's a manipulative counterfeit boundary. Once again, understanding the difference is important, not just for your time with the narcissist, but there are unhealthy people out there who are not narcissists. There are people out there who are simply deeply wounded, who do not know how to communicate who they are, usually because they don't even know who they are. And you just need to know, hey, this isn't going to work for me. I respect that you want to set that boundary. That isn't something that's aligned with me at this time. So I'm going to have to take a break from this relationship or whatever it is in your situation, whatever is gonna work for your specific situation. So I hope that you have found this video helpful. Again, if you wanna join one of my private communities, please check out the description of this video below and I will see you next time.